Last year was one of the greatest challenges we faced in our history. The pandemic hit us hard. Our research, people affected by cancer, and of course, all of us as individuals. Now, as we begin to emerge from the pandemic, we want to share with you some of the ways our scientists have had to adapt and innovate. And all the while, we continue to make radical progress for people affected by cancer through our life-saving research. My name is David Sebag Montefiore, and I'm Professor of Clinical Oncology at the University of Leeds and Director of the Leeds Cancer Research UK Centre of Excellence for Radiotherapy Research. I'm Ruth Boyd, I'm the Cancer Research UK Senior Research Nurse in Northern Ireland. My name is Amit Samani, I'm a Cancer Research UK Clinical Research Fellow based at the Francis Crick Institute in London. Hi, my name is Joanna Joyce and I am at the University of Lausanne and the Ludwig Institute for Cancer Research. I'm Andrew. I'm one of the project leaders at Cancer Research UK's Centre for Drug Development. My name is Andy Roy and I'm a clinician scientist leading the research group at the University of Oxford. I'm Agatha, I'm a PhD student at Cancer Research UK Centre in Edinburgh. I'm Lee Parry and I work here at the European Cancer Stem Cell Research Institute at Cardiff University. So while we didn't make much progress in lab terms last year, we certainly did in other areas. We wrote grants, we wrote papers, we refined our ideas and we made some new collaborations with the help of the CIUK Open Lab Initiative. During the last year, I've worked with colleagues internationally to rapidly produce new treatment guidelines based on our research for patients with rectal cancer. This has led to a substantial increase in the use of short and effective radiotherapy treatments that have also helped protect patients from the risk of COVID-19 infection. Regardless of the pandemic, people still suffer from cancer and need our help. This uh, motivated me to stay involved in my research by analysing my data and planning future experiments. Uh, many of the postdocs and students in our groups are, are, have really come together over the last year in a way that I think has actually ironically been facilitated by the technological um, platforms that we've all had to uh, come accustomed to. Once we got over the first wave of the pandemic and we restarted to recruit patients to cancer clinical trials, then we knew we just had to keep going full steam ahead despite the pandemic. And when we did reopen, it was only a few short weeks until we enrolled the first patients and we've kept that momentum going throughout the pandemic. Globally, this has actually been an incredible year for science, innovation and clinical trials. My hopes for the future are that we all stay safe and that we're able to provide cancer research, treatment and care in a way that best meets the needs of patients and their families. We have a better understanding of risk factors, we can have preventative agents, we have better screening detection. So that cancer has less of an impact on the lives of people. I think many of us have developed new and sometimes better ways of working, as well as developed connections across the globe. And so I hope that in the years to come, we can take these forward for the benefit of our patients. Of course, that we can see each other again, so that we can go back to having um, highly interactive, productive, free-ranging discussions. That when this little guy grows up, cancer will be a thing of the past. Thank you. We are very optimistic about the future and our determination to beat cancer hasn't faltered. Our world-class research will continue to make transformative steps in the prevention, diagnosis and treatment of the disease. Yes, one in two of us may get cancer, but all of us can support the research that will beat it. So on behalf of the whole of the Cancer Research UK scientific community, thank you.